All right, guys. Well, I use my my uh, Phillips head screwdriver here, and both of these screws are uh, loose. So if I recall correctly, I got to pull out the screws and then remove the handle. So let me see if I can get a magnet or something for that. All right, guys. I couldn't find a small magnet, so I use this Harbor Freight. Uh, Thingy majiggy here, put my screwdriver and then uh, I pulled the screws out. So I'll put that to the side there and uh, see what moves or what doesn't move or what happens. There we go. So the handle's off and both of the sides are uh, loose on there. Come on. Might have to get rough with this. There we go. And this is the regulator I'm talking about, so this is just untwist here. And I believe these have an automatic drain on them. And here it is. So, here's the new one, here's the old one. I'm gonna have to uh, use this fitting on this one. And I believe everything else is in here. This is the first time I opened it. I did buy this about four months ago. I bought this before the external regulators. And the picture didn't show any of the internal parts, so I'm happy it does come with it. And let me see if I can show you what was wrong with this old one. Here on the top, I don't know if you can see how the O-ring is it's exposed on a... You see how it fell off? It's supposed to have a little lip on the top. This one doesn't have it anymore. So, we're going to go ahead and install that one. Alright guys, I went off camera a little bit. Basically, I twisted this off. So all I have to do is screw it on this uh, new filter. And basically, pop this back in there. Something like this. There we go. And that should be it for the the bowl replacement. Other than that, um, everything looks good in here. I don't see any loose parts or anything uh, that I want to uh, remove or anything like that. I don't got no spider webs. Here's a view of the, this side of the, the board. You know, for you guys that have one that haven't opened it up, that's what it looks like on that side. And then you got more components on this side. And that's about it, so. Y'all can see the air comes on this side, you regulate it. It goes over there to, probably like a little electronic solenoid there. Or who knows what exactly the name is, but that's the inside guts for this unit. Alright guys, well, I was going to put it up together, but, um. I wanted to try something first, so when I try to remove this fitting, the nipple starts moving from the inside here. So, I'm going to have to uh, install the regulator here on the outside before I put the lid on it. So, i got to find me something to hold on this fitting or maybe some channel locks. Hold on to this fitting and unscrew that and go from there. So, once again, I'm going to pause the camera and uh, go look for some tools. Alright guys, well... I'm going to go ahead and remove the whole uh, nipple here with uh, the coupling and the quick connect. And I got these two nipples here, which I'm going to try. They're both uh, quarter inch ID, but the outer diameter changes a bit on them. So I'll see which one I end up using right now. As y'all can see, the this brass one has a, a bigger ID on there. And this one will work fine. As y'all can see, it'll stick out a little bit there. And then I'll go ahead and mount my filter. And uh, so far, looking pretty good. 
I'll go ahead and remove this, put some Teflon on there and pat it on there and see what happens. Alright guys, well, I went ahead and put some elect electrical tape here just to, uh, to kind of not have too much of a wobble where it mounts on the plasma cutter lid there. And I'm just going to see which way my uh, airflow goes, which is uh, towards uh, the plasma cutter. And I'm going to go ahead and put that end on there. And then the little quick connect on the other end. I went in and put about four or five threads of... Uh, uh, I'm sorry about... I went about four or five times around with the Teflon tape there. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up a little bit, you know, to my likings. And then I'll just pop it here in the back of the plasma cutter. So... And once again, you got to be careful with the threads on the other filter because they look like to be aluminum. So... I'll just do this hand tight to where I'm comfortable. And you really don't want to put too much pressure on there because you don't want to break it. So and that's about good right there. And this looks about good as well. So basically I got the inside filter uh, repaired. And I got my external one on there now secure. And this is what I was talking about here. The little space. I did put some tape. So I can kind of feel it where it moves a little bit. But not, not too much. It doesn't bother me. And theoretically you would want to make sure everything uh, is working properly before you put the lid. But... Uh, in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and put the case on there. I don't want to short circuit anything or, you know, hurt anybody. So I'll go ahead and put the lid, go in the reverse order, and uh, it should be ready to, to run. It looks like it already aligned there, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some screws, see if they go in. Okay, that one already started. All right, guys, well, that pretty much sums it up. Next thing I do is test it out which will probably be another video because I got other stuff to do like I said I run behind on my uh, my projects and that pretty much sums it up so I got a secondary filter here so that'll be one two three I think I'll be kind of over filtering and I'll probably uh, end up cutting my airflow so both of these I believe they're uh, coalescing this one and this one the internal one i'm not too sure uh, what design it is i don't know if it's just a regular air filter or exactly what kind of filter it is but um, i don't want to have too much restriction so i'm going to try this out this way and uh, one of these i know was auto drain the second one i don't remember exactly if it was or not but uh, i'll run some tests uh, i'm going to be changing the air hose i use i'm going to go from a 25 footer to a 50 i believe and um uh, one of the reasons I didn't put this on the compressor was as uh, the heated air goes through the air hose, it starts cooling down. So you go from a gas to a liquid. So if you want to remove uh, liquids from your line, you're not going to be able to do it close to your compressor because you got to wait for the gas to cool down. So I put it on the, on the end device. And uh, like I said, uh, so far so good. I mean, I'm happy with this. Uh, machine I haven't done really much maintenance to it besides replacing the, the little bowl here so hopefully this helped you guys out um for those that never opened one of these or have no idea what it looks on the inside well hope it helps you out guys and uh, like i said um, have fun be safe and um see y'all later bye bye